Up till now, emulating a keyboard or a mouse was only possible with an Arduino Micro or a USB host shield. With the new Arduino support for the ESP32 S2, I will show you how it can be done with our darling. In addition, we will add Wi-Fi to create remote logging to Excel or other PC software. If you have evil thoughts, you can also use it as a wireless rubber ducky to hack other PCs or play a trick with your colleagues. As a bonus, we will deepen our knowledge of how USB works. Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Most of our boards have a USB connector. So why is it not possible to emulate a keyboard or a mouse with them? Why is it possible with the Arduino Micro or the ESP32 S2? How is it done and how can we remotely control it via Wi-Fi? All valid questions which will be answered in this video. The first question, why are not all USB connections the same? A USB connection needs two roles, a host and one or many peripherals or devices. Each host can create multiple ports to offer a separate connection to each device. The logical connection between a host and an endpoint in a device is called pipe. More than one connection over the same cable is possible. A webcam, for example, offers a video stream on one connection and an audio stream on a second one. Most of our devices have a USB to serial chip, which only offers one USB device role and one endpoint. The PC or the USB hub then is the host and we have a valid USB configuration. But still, we cannot emulate a keyboard or mouse with such a USB to serial adapter chip. Google says we need a host shield. Strange. The keyboard is definitely a device and the PC is the host. And still, everybody writes that it does not work unless we use either a host shield with a Max 3421E chip or an Arduino Micro with a built-in USB function. But we do not need host chips. We only need chips that not only offer the device class communications and CDC control for serial communication. Moreover, we need chips that also offer the human interface device or HID class because keyboards and mice belong to this class. As a coincidence, chips that offer these device classes also offer the host mode. This is why I thought I need a host chip to emulate a HID for a long time. Now I know better. Anyway, keyboard and mouse libraries for the host shield and for the micro exist for a long time. I used these libraries already in video number 9 to create a logger to fill out Excel sheets on a PC. Other than the original ESP32, the Dash S2 has a USB block included. The new version 2.0.0 of the Arduino framework supports this chip, including the USB function. It also supports the smaller C3 version, by the way. The C3 only offers the serial device like other USB to serial chips. Therefore, it cannot emulate an HID. We uncovered the myth of the keyboard as a host. Let's continue with another detail. The two data pins of a USB connector are not RX and TX as many would expect. Instead, they are called D plus and D minus. And both are bidirectional. But why do they use two wires for the same signal? One would be sufficient if we use it in both directions. Because USB cables can be as long as 5 meters or 16 feet, they can pick up a lot of noise. To avoid negative impact, the engineers used a trick. They transmit the same signal on two wires instead of only one. Does this help? No, it would not help without the trick. They reverse the polarity of one signal. Therefore, the D plus and D minus lines. 
the receiver subtracts one from the other and gets the original signal. Noise, on the other hand, is picked by both cables with the same polarity. Therefore, it is eliminated when both signals are subtracted. Indeed, a cool trick. By the way, do you know how you can create USB cables longer than 5 meters? You include a range extender in the middle of the cable. Such an extender is a hub with only one port. Now your cable is already 10 meters long. Good to know if you need it. Enough about USB. Now we have to ask ourselves, how can we use the ESP32 S2? Here I have a few boards with this chip. The original from Espressif, one from TTGO and one from the Unexpected Maker or Adafruit. Both are the same by the way. For this video I will use the Saola board from Espressif. All others should work the same. All boards have one micro or USB-C connector and we see that those two boards have a USB to serial chip and the USB connectors are connected to this chip. The feather is different and has no such chip. What the hell happened with the versatile USB function of the chip on these two boards? We have to connect a female USB connector to GPIO 19 and 20. For all who saw my RTL8720 headache video, Espressif also has a confusing pin numbering. The silk screen on the top has numbers from 0 to 46. The pinout diagram has two times numbers from 1 to 21 and the GPIOs are numbered in a third way. Because I'm now used to this crap, I stay calm and continue. I urge you to pay attention when connecting your new USB connector to GPIO pins 19 and 20 because they have precisely the opposite numbering on the silk screen. What a coincidence! You can be sure I searched a while till I found the error in my cabling. And please do not connect VCC of the new USB connector or, if you do not trust me, at least to the 5V pin and never to 3.3V. Now we have two USB connectors, one more than with the Arduino Micro. Very convenient. With only one connector you can become nearly crazy if you do not pay attention during keyboard emulation projects. Even Arduino warns you to pay attention. Of course, this warning is not needed if you work with two cables. Then you can always unplug the keyboard cable to stop if your sketch goes crazy. Let's continue with the programming. I assume you already have installed the newest DSP32 support in the Arduino IDE. Check if you have at least version 2.0.0. If you select the S2 dev module, you find many examples. Let's have a look at this one. It simply locks you out. Later we will see how you can drive your colleague crazy if we pimp it a bit. If we look at the sketch, we see that we need these two libraries plus the definition of this USB HID keyboard. Then we have to start the keyboard as well as the USB functionality. That's it. Now our sketch can press and release keys as we would on the keyboard. We can even press more than one key simultaneously, like the Ctrl Alt Delete of Windows. They keep pressing until we release them. Cool! We can also print whole sentences or whole values measured by our sensor. With Keyboard Right, you can include all ASCII characters which exist on a keyboard. You can open or close windows, for example. Here is where your imagination starts. So far everything is only on paper. How do we get it into the ESP? As usual, by upload it via the serial connector. If we select USB CDC on boot, our second USB connector acts as a keyboard. If we connect it with our computer, we hear a typical sound and we see the new serial connection. If this does not happen, you most probably mixed pin 19 and 20 as I did. Also, here I discovered a caveat. If we select the CDC option, serial does no more work on the standard port. At least in my case. Not good because we lose the possibility for debugging. Maybe you know a trick to keep it working? 
If your board does not have a USB to serial converter, you should select this option and upload through their internal USB, like with the Arduino Micro. It enables to create smaller boards. But as usual on this channel, we want more. All we saw up till now, we could do with an old Arduino Micro. Now I want to combine what we learned with MQTT. Like that, we can, for example, insert values measured by sensors into Excel. Or we can log out our colleagues on their PCs from remote. If you plug one of your prepared ESP32 S2s somewhere hidden in a PC, you have complete control over the keyboard. They will love you. My sketch is nicer. It transfers temperature values from my weather station. If I put the focus on an empty Excel, it is automatically filled over the air. Much better than with the Arduinos. You find this sketch on my GitHub. One thing, however, is not easy. If you use a non-US keyboard, you have to do some translation of characters. Otherwise, you get some gibberish. I create the MQTT messages in Node-RED. All strings sent to the topic remote keyboard will end as keystrokes on the PC. You could also use this Telnet example and combine it with a USB keyboard function. It then transfers all keystrokes of your keyboard directly to a remote PC. This was my application. What is your idea? One more thing. Because the ESP32 S2 also supports the mass storage device class, it can be programmed to appear as a USB drive. With this example file, your S2 is recognized as a disk drive. They even included a file on this disk. And this file reveals us another secret. They used the tiny USB library. MicroPython uses this feature too to create a slick user interface as shown in video number 240. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.